Sweat, baby, sweat, baby, sex is a Texas drought me And you do the kind of stuff that only Prince would sing about So put your hands down my pants and I'll bet you'll feel nuts Yes, I'm Siskel, yes, I'm Ebert And you're getting two thumbs up You've had enough of two-hand touch You want it rough, you're out of bounds I want you smothered, want you covered Like my Waffle House hash browns Coming quick and for the next Revolution Apex Just like Coca-Cola stock You are inclined to make me rise an hour early Just like daylight savings time Do it now, you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals so let's do it like they do on the welcome to fox tv everyone Laura looks furious. With she us. doesn't like that song. I hate that song, and they know I hate that song, and they do that. But now we're many recording. Given don't do it to annoy you. you we do it because we like it. We you have like... sometimes. Done we it think you... it's pure poetry. 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 We've not even done the second verse, which I think is better than the first. It is. So Tracy Beaker then. <laughs> we're talking about Tracy Beaker today. We're talking about children in care homes. Why did you start with what's it called? The bad, uh, touch, the bad by touch by the blood. By the blood why, why would you start this precious episode with the bad <laughs> touch? <laughs> no, it is a precious episode, though. It's actually one of the more serious ones. And you've started it with the bad touch. The tone shifts massively. The tone will shift massively. Yeah, so we've got a light in it a bit at the beginning. Yeah, you got to. I just want people to know what we are capable of. Anyway love the kind you clean up with no let's not (laughs) like the lost catacombs of egypt only god knows where we stuck it hieroglyphics let me be specific i want to be down in your southeast but i got this notion that the motion of your ocean means small craft advisory so if i capsize on your thighs high tide b5 i sunk your battleship please turn me on i'm mr coffee with an automatic trip show me yours i'll show you mine two time you'll love it just like lyle and then we'll do it doggy style so we can both watch x files do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get copyright struck for that? No. no because we don't play the song, we just say the words. All right. Well, lyrics websites don't get I consider it public for... domain. Elsie, Elsie out, did you there, Meg? I know, she knows yeah. that a bit better than me. Sorry, sorry. You did fucking nothing. I, <laughs> I hate that you song. You did not put your back into it. You did not get on board. You just sat there with a fucking face on. So. I always have a face. You, you know who you're like? You're like Tracy Beaker. Fucking Beaker. Roll credits. <laughs> I can make my world come true. My world come I'll true. make you to see me through. Doesn't matter what may come my way. No. Believe me now, I will win someday. In case you've forgotten, I'm Elsie. I'm Meg. <laughs> I'm Laura. <laughs> Right, let's uh, let's <laughs> let's crack on with the episode. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, prepare. Be prepared to have very few laughs for this episode. Yeah, that's it. For that's it. Laughs. That's all you get in. You well, get, that's why we've put the the bad touch in there. Yes, yeah. there's some chuckles, but it, but Tracy Beaker is is heavier. Of Reminds you that shows. you know, even in a world where things like this exist, you might get shagged. That's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the heaviest one we've done, so you know. Be warned. Be There's warned. no content warnings, really. No, no but... it's just. But proceed. With it's caution, very, yeah. very like realistic, and in it's a realistic sad. Yeah. So it's rather than a realistic happy. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy. Are you crying? Bug off, weed. Tracy Beacon never cries. It's the dumping ground dust. Gets my hay fever. Laura just opened a wine. <laughs> Is that a wine? Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's wine. a primitivo, but it, f- it almost it sounded fizzy when you opened it. it, it oh, did. it's a can of wine. Yeah, yeah. Keeping it classy. She bought two cans of wine ages ago and has only drunk them when we've been recording. Yeah, and yeah. this is the first time in quite a while that me and you haven't been drinking during a recording. I would say I've only drunk during three of them, I guess. Yeah, but the last three, pretty much. Yeah, I suppose. Well, the I've last got a four. bottle of water. Laura, uh, Elsie's got a coffee, and Laura's got a coffee and a wine. <laughs> Living that, just put. So she's definitely, Italian. definitely gonna need a shit. <laughs> just put them both point. in your body and see who comes out on top. <laughs> see who who comes, who, out, who on comes out on top. Yeah, the upper or the downer. You had a good week. 
Uh, yeah, I've had a good week. Um, the reason I'm not drinking right now is because I'm feeling trepidatious about the subject we're about to cover. How was your week? Uh, uh, good. Um, it was good up until I had to watch five or six episodes of Tracy Beacon. It's bummed me out. Why are you feeling like that? Because I think that this is the most um, beloved of the shows mm. and the most important and the most... It's got the most cultural relevance. Or, yeah, it does. It's just, it's massive, isn't it? It is massive. And the reason that we're not, we're, we're only doing series one because there's, so much, there's so much of it and they're all quite distinct and different eras. Yeah. So yeah. I, even from between series one and series two, because after I watched the episodes you said, I then watched the first episode of series two. And even so, like, she's, she grows quite a lot in the space between yeah. the recording. So, but I kind of feel like. Sorry, Laura. How was your week before we launch into this? <laughs> my dad's here. Like, my dad's literally here. He's in the premises as we record, having a nap. Because he's having a rough come down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Series one of Tracy Beaker. Mm -hmm. I guess let's dive in, because it's a big one, isn't it? It's quite a big one. It's quite... I mean, the series, each episode is only about... 12 between like 10 and 15 minutes long they're not long anime so... rules lengthwise Brilliant. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so they used to play them in double bills because that would fit a half hour time slot so there's 26 episodes in the first series but 13 episodes if you look on bbc iplay and we did tell laura yeah, this they and she decided them. to ignore us and well, yeah, watch the I, wrong episode i listened and then i just like and i registered but i didn't then apply it <laughs> if that makes sense Idiot. it does it makes You're sense because i went oh it's episode spoon. four they don't also because you sent us episode names right on bbc yeah. iplay they do not have the episode names they just have numbers, uh, yeah, right. yeah. which but they is... do also have numbers on <laughs> yeah, but they, they have, <laughs> but they have the wrong numbers. No, they have the right numbers. And if you applied it the way Elsie told you to, episode four is clearly the second half of episode two. What, so it should say one and two, three and four, instead of being episode one. No, it would just two. be because that's how it aired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. It's just, I just didn't apply it. It was just my folly. So anyway. it's the folly. I like <laughs> that. Folly. It started in 2002 and finished in 2007. So there were five seasons. Mm -hmm. So and we were, what, I, four to nine? Our ages. Uh, y yes. Yeah. So I was going through the Wikipedia pages for each individual season and like, expecting it to jump up to half an hour. And it never did. Should we start off by saying what we personally remember of Tracy Beaker? Nothing. I never, you never watched saw it. it. I do cuz this Jacqueline Wilson books, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was aware of I was aware of Tracy Beaker, friends who watched Tracy Beaker. Um I was aware of the books. I read a bunch of her books. None of I didn't read any Tracy Beaker books. Which ones did you read? Uh Lola Rose. Good book. Uh, fantastic book. Uh Illustrated Mom. Good book. Mom. Oh, really good. Yeah. Dustbin Baby. Not read so you one. read the dark ones. Yeah, I read all the really dark ones. And there was one other one that was very like bigger than the other one. Actually, no, Lola Rose is Lola chunky. Rose is quite a chunky one, yeah. And then I read one set at a boarding school where the parents are working like estates at the boarding school and she's living there and they, they find something in the attic. It was great. She's I, a very good author, like really good. She's books. she's a brilliant author. Remember I had two friends in uni, they were um over for a year from Canada um to canadian men and it's really difficult to explain the cultural impact of jacqueline wilson yeah. to firstly boys and secondly people that aren't from the uk yeah like mm. if you're a girl in the uk you've read at least five like yeah. i've read so so many of them and i can remember like they're, they're so them. well written in the in the sense that like you don't want to put it down and it's so these dark complex subject matters that are very consumable for children yeah and sometimes they're light there are there well, yeah, all the ones i read Ooh. they do kind of range from like sort of six and seven years old to like 15 16 but jacqueline wilson herself she's 77 now hmm. she is the recipient of a kidney transplant i learned yesterday <laughs> and she is recently gay well not recently gay she's been She's recently out. She's recently out, yeah. 
she's been living with her partner for like the past 18 years or something but i remember a few they years were just ago friends. <laughs> they were roommates i remember the... oh my god they were roommates <laughs> oh my god they were roommates yeah it was like a, a guardian article came out like an interview yeah. and she mentioned that she was gay and you know twitter kind of exploded and everyone was like actually all of her books are about extremely intense codependent female friendships like we should have actually known and marginalized groups and it all yeah it all kind of fell together basically i I'm need not... to point out that it's not called twitter yeah anymore. i was thinking this i was now just gonna to breeze quote, over that now it's called x no i'm not to quote a very recent film <laughs> there is only the time before x and the time after x <laughs> Okay, it's so recent that only one of us has actually seen it. <laughs> but I know exactly what you're talking about, Barbie, right? I don't know. What no. <laughs> well, use your context clues. What has she seen most recently? What's not Barbie? Oppenheimer. Yeah. What? Yes. Okay, but, okay, but what did they say actually? Yeah, only before the okay. bomb, okay. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were saying in Oppenheimer. I didn't they even said want to say... there are before Twitter and after Twitter. Well, I didn't want to say um, to quote a film because I imagine that was probably said, but I don't know. I don't remember who said it, so I didn't want to say to quote X J, J. <laughs> Robert Oppenheimer <laughs> to quote Killian Murphy. <laughs> She was part of that kind of 2000s group of authors um, that, like, young teenage girls, or, like, even maybe a bit younger than that. And sometimes boys. Yeah, would read. So, like, I'm thinking Louise Renison, who wrote um, Anger Songs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the book's called Anger Songs and Full Frontal it's not game. Yes. Um, Which is better, I think. I actually think the film might be two books put together or two or three books put Because together. she wrote about 12 in that series. Yeah, there were 12 and I read every single one of them. <laughs> um, they Kathy, were quite good. Kathy Cassidy, who wrote... Um, all of her books were like very colourful. There was one called Driftwood. There was one called yes, Indigo Blue. I remember. Something like that. There was definitely a red one, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, there was yeah, yeah, there were different coloured ones, and there were a few more authors in that sort of vein, and that really, really, the more I think about it, really shaped my childhood because I was such a big reader as a kid, and I read all of these books and I had all of them, and they weren't like fantasy or anything; they were all like very grounded in British kitchen sink realism, realism, yeah, yeah which is. So you're right in that be having to or trying to explain that kind of culture to someone who isn't British. Yeah. How do you explain that? Because it was very difficult. It was hard to because it's not as if it's not even as if she's online. Like no. it's it's purely it's a it's a time capsule of who we were when we were in year six, right? Yeah. Like also something I feel about Jacqueline Wilson that I had never ever thought about until I saw we're not going to talk about the later yeah. Tracy Beaker things but in my mum Tracy Beaker which was which came out a couple of years ago yeah. and the first Tracy Beaker was the early 90s um so in so the BBC adapted that book into three specials yeah and when I was watching it, like, obviously, it's it's still Danny Harmer. It's the same, you know, Cam's in it, Lisa Coleman. It's a lot of the same cast. And I was watching it and it brought back a lot of... I, I cried, actually. It was the same music. It was... I had a really great time watching it, but it didn't feel like the TV show Tracy Beaker. What it felt like was an adaptation of a Jacqueline Wilson book. There's something very jacqueline wilson about it yeah like there's a scene when the girl eats too much cake at her birthday party is sick and the three adults in the room <laughs> sort of corral around her yeah. and like make her feel and I, there's just something about that like a ch something minorly bad happening to a child yeah. and them crying and a, a kindly adult sorting them out it felt so Jacqueline Wilson in a way that I love the TV series, but it was different. It felt like this is her book. 
They were surprisingly gritty for kids' books. Don't touch my mum! I mean, she's not my mum, but it's not cheating, because my mum and that model are practically twins. Now shift! One thing I do feel about her writing, and it's like the one drawback to me, and I think we've spoken about this before, is that her voice is very old and quite um, clipped yeah. and old-fashioned. Like, she does have 11-year-olds in her book saying things like, I find him ever so handsome. And it's like, yeah. why? <laughs> but that's... Maybe yeah. that's why I was the way I was as a child. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. No. <laughs> there's other reasons <laughs> so we've done Jacqueline Wilson that section's over I don't really we've have a lot it. more to say about <laughs> I, but, I think um, we're going to reread Lola Rose this is this yeah, is, yeah. yeah. She, I, mean, I think they probably would still hold up it's been a good 10 years at least since I've read one the Lottie Project was my favourite one I loved the Lottie mm-hmm. Project the Lottie Project fell in between the ones for quite young kids like the Worry website yeah. um, and the darker grittier ones i think the middle ones like secrets best friends lottie project the like for 12 year old bed and breakfast well, kid. nine to 12 is sort but of... some of them are for a bit older than that yeah. yeah i i think yeah so meg and i have memories of tracy beaker laura well has only watched it what today and yesterday today and yesterday i remember people watching it when i was a kid uh potentially because i have an older brother I was not allowed to watch Tracy Beaker in the sense of the remote would be wrestled off me. Or I was, you know, six-year-old fucking hipster going, no, no, everyone's watching Tracy Beaker. I'm not interested in Tracy Beaker. That's also very possible. My memory is that it was on so much and repeated so much throughout the entirety of my kids' TV watching days that there are episodes where I can just remember the dialogue. Me too. Me too. I I I don't remember. Oh, I meant to write this down. But I don't remember what specifically, what specific bit was happening. But um, yeah. As I was watching it, I was like, I I remember this. Like I could carry on the the dialogue, especially Peter's dialogue. Aww. I remember so, so much so of sweet. Peter. I hope you're happy, Slug. I hope you and the Browns live happily ever after in slimy Slugland. They won't want me. I'm bad. You can be bad if your name was Darth Vader. I tried my best. You can't be bad like normal people. She spent your whole life being good for your smelly nana. Shut up about my nan. Shall I get you some tea, nana? Shall I rub your feet, nana? Shut up about my nan. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Ow! Get back or I'll throw it. Pete, you don't want to break something that's so precious. Peter, that's the only picture Tracy has of her mum. I hate you, Tracy Beaker! No! Shut up about my nan. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I remember that. I remember, get back or I'll throw it. Just so much of Peter, I remember. Especially, like, his cadence when he sings Happy Birthday. What do you want, insect? I can't sleep. Tell someone who cares. What? I uh-uh. am Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy oh, shut up! I want this to be first because you're my best friend. And you're an alien from planet Fat Chance. Place is full of loonies. Peter? in the birthday party creepy. episode <laughs> it is a little creepy but i just i don't know there's something about the way he delivered his lines where they have just really stuck in there i think i remember seeing bits of the like and i don't like the drawing style i remember as a child not liking the drawing style nick right? sharrett yeah i don't like it and I, Poor very nick. yeah very vivid memories of not liking it when i was little and being put off by it which is ridiculous but whatever um, and, and he I, really did every single jacqueline wilson book, yeah. like over a hundred and i think that I remember seeing one of the a- animated bits and being very put off by it because I I found I found them now and I think I found them then annoying so I was just not interested in watching it or because Tracy Beak is a little too much like me <laughs> uh, when I was a kid especially so I was like no no I can't be reminded of this <laughs> no no 
I also remember that because they were, I don't think, because they were played so often, I don't think I ever watched them in order. So mm, yeah, me too. I, that makes I, sense. Today, having watched some of it back actually in order, I've only really just grasped the concept of the Cam's fostering process of Tracy. Tracy just bullies her into it, basically. No, more that like I Gills don't. Her into I it. don't remember. I know that Tracy does get so she. This happens a lot later on, but I was I was surprised that this is why I watched the first episode of series two because I was like. But she she gets fossed at the end of series one, but there's four more series. So what happens, mm. and why is she back at the <clears throat> dumping ground? But because you don't, you rarely no, saw the foster them... home. Is they call it the dumping ground? They do. Yeah. yeah, they. So the yeah, I home, wanted sorry. to see why, um, because it. I never watched it in order, so I never got the st- the storyline of Cam that continues through the first series of Tracy meeting Cam and then, you know, they become mm. friendly and then Tracy goes out with Cam to see the new house that she's moving into and at the end of the series, Cam decides to foster Tracy. And this is the last room. So what do you think? Don't you like it? It's got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with you, Tracy. It's your new bedroom. For weekends. For always, if you want it to be. Oh, Cat! I love it! I absolutely love it! It's the best bedroom anyone can have in their whole life ever! You two seem happy. We are. My foster mother and I have decided we'll take the flat. It's a but tricky I was one. like, there, she is in the dumping ground for the rest of the, you know, four more series. Why is that? And she goes back to the dumping ground at the beginning of series two because she's caused a fire in Cam's house. By yeah, Cam needs a breakfast. fucking break. And Cam's going to her mum, so Tracy has to go back right. to the dumping ground and obviously isn't very happy about it. But I know that at the very end of series five cam and her partner adopt tracy so there's this very back and forth thing whereas where tracy's like is being fostered by cam then she's not this that the other blah 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 blah. and so if you're not watching them in order and you're young you might not grasp the concept like i clearly did not grasp the concept of what was going on same i do think having a chronological plot in a kid show is is risky because like what kid is gonna know like what kids tv show is gonna play things in order for one because they don't do that and what kid is gonna necessarily know to sit down friday at 3 p.m for the new episode of tracy beaker it's not it's not such a problem now it's streaming true yeah but at the time yeah it was just on repeat you'd watch it like five to six o'clock or whatever after school this or the other that yeah. would be on in the morning as well you were just going to get bits and yeah. pieces here and there and i remember getting bits and pieces of like series one when she's tiny and series yeah. four when her hair's longer like it was that all mixed sense. up because like yeah. we, we were four when the first season started i doubt yeah. we were watching it because it is a it is skewed older than four like yeah it you- didn't feel like it mattered at the time though because each episode has its own story yeah. that makes sense yeah that that's fine it didn't you just i never got the concept of fostering i was gonna i was about because, to say because uh it was it that was the linear yeah through through the series storyline so that's the thing that confused i don't even think i i registered that it confu- had confused me until i watched it back and i was like oh okay I, I get it i do think when you're a kid if you don't understand something but it doesn't seem to matter you just sort of go along you with it and you, it, yeah. you just don't you just That's don't pay me attention now. <laughs> I mean, it is me now. If I don't know, if I don't know something and it doesn't seem to matter, I simply won't find out. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I guess when you're an a- no, I when don't. you're an adult, things there are more things do matter. So if you don't understand something central in the media you're watching, like fostering, y- you would figure it out. Like you would, you would, yeah, research. Whereas when you're a kid, especially when we were kids, what remit did we have to research what something is? Like I couldn't Google what is fostering when I was five. Did, well, I didn't think, have a computer. I think the overall. Series one actually works on its own. Like yeah, a lot yeah. of a lot of the other series, I feel like there isn't a beginning and end. It's just like yeah. the happenings of the 
care home. Yeah. Um, but series one is quite like straight up and down like it just works like she gets a a difficult child gets put back into the dumping ground after the couple that's fostered her can't do it anymore they just had a baby just had a baby and she gets pushed out um not to say that that's like okay but just to explain yeah (laughs) so um a girl called justine littlewood has taken her room Peter, if I'm not back in half an hour, I'll call International Rescue. Tracy, Tracy, wait! Do you not want to hear the Michael Milligan Children's Home welcome speech? Not the way you say it, your pants. Oh, hang on! Mike, someone's put their stuff in my room. Look, uh, Tracy, you've been gone for three months. We thought you left us for good this time. This is my Um, her best friend is now Louise. Justine Louisa? Louise, um, yeah. Justine Littlewood's best friend. Um, the amount Justine Littlewood, the whole full name is screamed. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's a like episode four. A writer comes to do some sort of session with the kids. They get closer over the series, and mm. by the end, she's adopted. Mind you, when well, you first, when she first meets her, she is there's an older like teenager at the foster, at the group home who uh, she steals her makeup, she puts on her best jumper. And, Adele. Yeah, Adele. Yeah. And Tracy has stolen all of the older girls, Adele's makeup. She's wearing her best jumper. She's come down to meet the writer because she wants to be a writer herself, so she's super excited. But she's also an entitled little <laughs> which we'll get into later. Um, I wouldn't use the word entitled dis- to describe her, but we can talk about this in a minute. <sighs> yeah, okay, I get what you mean. But she's yeah, yeah. not entitled. She is a deluded child of trauma yeah 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 she's it's also you're a uh, neuroscientist a lot of a lot of the entitlement i also think is like a bravado yeah yeah no that's exactly so she's putting forth entitlement but i don't think i think she's deeply doesn't actually think she's worth we see it we see her how sensitive and actually what a good person she is every episode Mm. yeah no especially uh, the uh episode where well yeah. So the when she first meets Cam, she then hurls insults at Cam. Bug off, Jenny. I hate you. You knew how much I wanted to meet that writer. Tracy, and I hate that Justine Littlewood. She all spoils everything. Tracy, it's me, Cam. I just wanted to tell you that I've looked through your life book. You've written some fantastic stuff. I adored a bit about your foster parents and the River of Tears. Showed a lot of imagination. Are you just saying that because you feel sorry for me? You better not, because I don't care. I know. No, you don't. I'm the one stuck in here, not you. I bet you're not even a proper writer. Writers don't bite their nails or wear tatty jeans. You look like a right loser, you do. Not rich and glamorous at all. That's smart writers are. Really smart with posh hair and swanky clothes and loads of makeup. And loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. Yeah. (laughs) She does say thank you and she's quite nice, but Cam seems to brush it off, which I I really applaud Cam for that because, like, I'd probably not be as nice, but then I'm not as patient. I enjoyed it as a kid and watching it now, like, I'm amazed at how good the kids are. They're really brilliant. Like, Danny Harmer especially Mm. is, like, she's so cute. And she's so... She's so good. Like, she's funny. Yeah, they're all very relaxed into it. They're all very naturally playing these characters. Yeah. There's none of the stiffness that you might expect, which is really impressive. Should we talk about the different kids in Series 1? So, the group in Series 1 only exist in series one because about half of them left after series two because they moved location got adopted and they sure <laughs> they they moved location they couldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, fair enough. so it was in uh, the house it was a house in ealing that they used um for the initial yeah um and that house now uh the there's a it's flats and one of them is up for rent the, sale, the one with the, the one window, with the, the iconic with the Tracy Beacon yeah. Window, yeah and danny harmer did say on twitter that's really cool, but obviously it's extortionate. It's got the round window. 
People pay extra for that, you know. <laughs> well, it's in Ealing. Well, yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's in London. Yeah. <laughs> Full stop. Um, so West. Oh. West, West it's in London. West, so, so the kids are Justine and Louise, who we've already spoken about. Love Just them. a quick, a quick yeah. aside about Justine Littlewood as well. Why have they sm- like smeared? Yes, down? <laughs> I wanted to talk about this. I knew that there was like a meme about her sideburns. Yeah. They're not sideburns. No. They have taken two pieces of hair and just Flipped gelled them, yeah. them to her. She's like Ibsen. Yeah. Like there's so it's much very strange. sideburn. That's what happens when hair and makeup don't know how to do your edges. It's just, it's weird. Like it's put so them behind strange. your ears, please. It seems like such a weird and like bold decision. They were like, we're going to do this. And we're always going to do this. It's strange. But anyway, I know that Meg wants to talk about the fashion of this series. So we can Ugly. we can go on to that in a minute. Yeah. There's Peter who was like, oh, oh, oh he's so cute. Oh, yeah, okay. He'd be snapped up a bit like, like dogs. At a do- you'd he's take adorable. the cutest one first. He is so <laughs> nice. He is so well behaved. And I think like the only thing that the only moment where he seemed to be misbehaved was when he was egged on by Tracy because she said, You'll be leaving this harm if you're this well behaved. I don't want anyone to fuss to me. You don't. No, I only just got used to it here. I've got it. All your worries are over. If I can train them, I can train you. You can? By the time I'm finished, Frankenstein won't even want to fuss to you. Um, and when she talked smack about his nan. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. That's something to talk... I, I know we're trying to do the characters. No, but that's fine. There is this kind of sense of the characters all wanting to move on and be fostered or adopted. Or in Adele's case, she moves... She she gets a bed sit at one point and... She just lives on her own. Goes yeah. She ages sort of out of thing. the system. But yeah. none of them... Uh, simultaneously none of them want to leave they all want to stay there well because the, the group home it's it's what 10 uh, ish kids with three adults who all love them they know they feel safe there of course like but then at the same time the system perpetuates wanting to be adopted like you want a family you want for lack of a better phrase a forever home because you're like that's what normal kids have that's what i maybe used to have i want it again yeah. yeah. So there's Peter. Uh, Maxie is maybe. I love. I love Maxie. Maxie. Yeah, me too. I love. I remember so much of him. With little cupcakes. And he was like, and I lick them <laughs> for extra stick. Oh, so Maxie nobody is... washes twice a day. Love him. <laughs> he was so good. You can't lick the bowl if it's empty. <laughs> so if it's good. empty, there'll be nothing to lick. Yeah. Maxie. You said I could lick the bowl if I helped. Not till it's empty. But if it was empty, there would be nothing to lick. What is going on in here? We've been making fairy cake. Yeah, yeah, but what with? A baseball bat? Come on, let's get you hose down, hey? Nobody washes twice a day. Maxie, you have got so much cake mix on you, I can either wash you or bake you. Hmm? Come on. Oh! Oh, Maxie, I've had two already. We made them for you. Oh, all right then. I stuck the sweets on first. I licked them to make them extra grumpy. <laughs> Maxie! Yeah, good idea. I'll tell you what, I reckon we should save this one for Tracy. Maxie's okay. in the books. Um, the Get vast majority of, over the series, mm. most kids in Tracy B could, yeah. were not in the books. So Maxie was one. Maxie and Peter are both younger. They seem like five? Maxie will be about five, Peter, and like maybe six or seven. Yeah, yeah. and then... There's sort of like three tiers of ages for the kids. Yeah, so Zach and Ryan are apparently brothers <coughs> and they're like the same age as Louise and mm. Justine. They're like, I didn't know this as a, I think as a kid Hustlers. I was like, oh, that's just what boys are like. But they're actually like Cockney wide boys, these yeah, little yeah, nine yeah. year olds. They, they're always grafting something. It's like my brother does the business. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you fix this? I need it by this afternoon. Is it just the ants? Yeah. No problem. Yeah. My brother does the business. How did it happen? It was Tracy Beaker. Look, first one's on the ass. Thanks. <laughs> first one's on the ass. <laughs> yeah. 
so they're they're only in series one. I feel oh. like this. Yeah, but in series two and onwards, you get Lol and Bouncer. Lol and Bouncer. Lol and Bouncer. I loved Lol and Bouncer. They're they're basically a similar. They're brothers. They're brothers. Apparently, they're a bit similar. <laughs> hmm. They're older though. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. They're, they should all be older. Time has passed. So you've got also. A... <laughs> Shut up, Liam. <laughs> You've got Adele. Now, Adele is like... The actress seems to be, what, like 15? a good eight years older than everyone else. I, like, I, she's the oldest, though. Yeah, I yeah. would assume she's like 15 or 16, is what I assume. I think she's meant to be 15 or 16, but I think the actress must be 18 or 19. Yeah, probably yeah. just... Hi, yeah. Listen, I don't suppose you'd help me tidy up, would you? Sorry. Right in my life book. Oh, what with? Plum crush? Anyway, I've done the house tours today. Yeah, uh, this is extra. I promised Jenny that I'd help straighten the place out you know, for the visitor. Okay. For five tapes of my choice from your CD collection and a late pass so I can see a movie with CJ. I thought you dumped him. Keep up. That was so last week. Right, listen. Three tapes, but no late pass. I'm sorry. No late pass, no deal. Sorry. Well, I, I would say that, but then there's so many kids on set anyway. Why not get a middle teenager? You know? The middle teens. She just seemed so you, a lot so older. So you've got an actress without a chaperone? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> you've, yeah, so you've got to have all those kids are going to have to have chaperones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's true. It's just they're all they're already going to be working these very slim hours because of the kids. Like, Yeah. We could Google it. We haven't. So Justine, right? <laughs> so the thing about Justine Littlewood is like, you can't talk about Tracy Beaker without talking about Justine Littlewood no. because she survived all five seasons like she was there from beginning to end and even now she's a regular in the um the, like the reboot, Tracy the, is an adult yeah life. the updated yeah, yeah. yeah. and my, when she my mum Tracy Beaker wasn't it yeah yeah and yeah. when she came back for my mum Tracy Beaker and it was being advertised there were lots and lots of adults on the internet being like oh my god they're still feuding they're still enemies and people were like tuning in in the middle of the afternoon to watch their to watch them reunite and they were still at each other's throats like it's... actually physically fighting it's like a rivalry for the ages yeah. is this show is the the new show is that for kids as well yeah, yeah it's okay. on cbc yeah, yeah. okay okay I wasn't sure. I thought it was four people our age who watched it. Well, well it they, kind they, of is. They, yeah, they could only have expected that people were going to watch yeah. it because I know it's called My Mum Tracy Beaker, but True, it's yeah. for a whole whole new generation of little kids. Yeah. So obviously people were going to be curious enough to have a look at it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's directly based on a book by Jacqueline Wilson as well. So yeah. Get that back! I'm Tracy Beaker with my incredible heartrending stories. <laughs> Tragic. She's only cut out a picture from a magazine pretending it's her mum. You two girls should be done. What other character do? Oh my god, the minders. Yes, I want to talk about Mike. The care workers, Mike, um, Jenny, Duke, Jenny, Elaine, and Elaine the pain. Elaine I the pain. Yes, loved Mike. I loved Mike. I Mike loved makes me Mike. want to cry. If you want me to have better luck, Mike, you should foster me yourself. <laughs> you get paid, and I'd be worth extra. Because I'm difficult and I've got behavioural problems. You'll probably get so much cash you could give up work and stay home all day eating chocolates. Oh, go on, we'd have a laugh. Have a brilliant time. Yeah, I'm sure we would. But it's not really on now, is it? Sorry, kiddo. You didn't think I was serious, did you? Ugh, I wouldn't want people thinking I had such a tragic foster dad. Don't think you can get round me with flattery, Tracy Beaker. But in the second series, you get Nathan. Yeah, because he and yes! Nathan is also so good. He's so good. I like all three of those adults. I was like, 
just I really liked them all. They were all really well written, really well cast. They're all just so nice. And they were just really happy to be there. I have no idea how accurate or not that is, but it really you're like, yes, well done. <laughs> I really love the fact. I obviously didn't pick up on this as a child, but I always thought that Tracy was like unnecessarily and like a bit difficult to no shouting to Elaine. Oh, okay, fair not, yeah. I, I even as a child, I think I understood why Tracy was the way she was. Yeah, but um. What I n never noticed as a kid was that the adults don't like Elaine either. No, no sign of her upstairs, Duke. She's not down here. Right, I'd better find a social worker. No, Jenny, easy. Come on, Tracy's upset enough already without having to face Elaine the pain. Yeah. So Tracy, um... I think, is fully justified in feeling like that because she it's not just her being... She is a pain. Tracy. Elaine. I understand where you're coming from. That's good, Elaine. You're really getting the hang of this job now. All I'm trying to say is you've been trying really hard to normalise your behaviour. Now, I appreciate that. We all do. Oh, thanks. And because you've got loads of ticks on the bonus money allowance chart, you'll get two extra pounds this weekend. Miss Sharp and I will just have a little chat about ways you can improve your schoolwork too. Now, I need your appointment form. Let's see what time she's put me down for. Tracy! Elaine is a social worker or care worker, but she's, she's not Tracy's social worker. Yeah. She doesn't work at the house. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 But the relationship between Mike and Tracy, oh my God, it makes me yeah. want to cry. Because Mike, yes, he left for a few seasons, but he did come back and he was in The Dumping Ground, which was a show after Tracy Beaker yeah. with different kids. So Mike has been working in that house <laughs> for, for time. Yeah. A saint! I'm not in, am I? Oh, I'm very clever. Look, about my leaving. They just didn't give me any time to... Is this a face of someone who cares? Oh, I care if you're upset. You get paid to care, Mr. Care Worker. I don't. You really don't care about me, huh? Watch my lips. Oh. I'm really sorry I do care. I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Forgive me. Just when you get used to things, everything changes. Well, you know, sometimes change can be good. Makes life interesting anyway. So you're leaving us because we're boring and you want a change? <laughs> you're definitely not boring. Look, if someone moves on, it doesn't mean they're going to forget you. Everyone forgets dumping ground kids. Oh, I won't. I promise. At the very, very last episode of Tracy Beaker Returns, which is a series in which Tracy works in this dumping ground as a care worker and Mike is her colleague. When she finally leaves, and it's the last episode of her being in that house, the last person she interacts with is Mike. And there's even an oh, there's an episode in that series where she gets very, very overly stressed and she starts cleaning everything and she just, she gets a bit weird and she breaks down and Mike says, well, the, the Tracy I knew as a child would just shout, but you don't do that anymore and it's no wonder that you're feeling like this. Like, he was, I think she, the last thing she says to him, like years, years after the first Tracy Beaker episode aired was, you've always been like a dad to me. And he's cast so beautifully. Mm. Connor Byrne plays that character yeah. just so well. I loved his interactions with with Peter because, like, he understands he understands the children really well. He's very patient. Yeah, and he he gets what each kid needs really, like, really quickly or seemingly, and just knows how to act for each exactly. kid. Exactly. Like when Tracy has a go at Peter because they share a birthday and she wants the party to be her own, and she storms off. And Mike looks at Peter and says, Peter, have you ever had a birthday party before? Knowing that he hasn't. Oh, and then, oh, I know. it's. And I never, you know, as a kid watching that, I'm just like, I don't he's care. But just your baby. He's so good. They're both of them. Yeah. Oh. Shall I calm down? I know. She's my best friend. She told you that? No, I'm not her best friend yet. But you're planning to be. We've got a lot in common. It's inevitable. So, what kind of birthday cake would you like? 
sponge with jam in it. You're talking my language. Peter, have you ever had a birthday party before? Man couldn't manage people running around. Then Duke and I are going to make sure you have such a blast of a party that Tracy Beaker is going to be begging you to let her share it. And it's that, uh, a later episode, Tracy, like, there's these people that come to take the kids out for a Saturday. Um, like, not all the kids, just one kid at a time. Um, and they, Elaine has assigned them to Tracy, and the care workers in the house are like, oh, she's the wrong fucking kid. <laughs> they put her with the wrong child. Or they put this couple. Peter. They put this couple with the wrong child because they know what each of the children need. And these old, much older, like more closer to grandparent age couple comes in and they are not they just don't have the energy for tracy whereas peter later on just like i brought you a cup of tea my nan said nothing's better when you're tired than a cup of tea yeah because he grew up with his nan yeah and yeah. then they go she was right and he goes she's dead oh my god <laughs> he's so blunt he's he's so sweet and he's so gentle and mike gets that he knows let's have peter make the tea whereas they know that tracy needs someone who can as they say outrun and outsmart her Mm -hmm. which that's cam Mm -hmm. that's cam but cam needs cam has to learn to be that person that's cam's um storyline she the, the whole five series she is the right person for tracy but she's learning to be that right person yeah that goes over the whole five yeah. seasons mm. yeah i'm sorry it's no good next tracy i like this flat my bedroom's miles too small we need something bigger that's not your bedroom it's going to be my study cam's gonna foster me any day now so we need a place with big second bedrooms with a sweet shop next door do you have anything like that Oh. We're not looking for places with big second bedrooms because A, I still haven't decided whether I'm fostering you and B, I can't afford it. Yes, you can. You'll get money for looking after me. That'll make up the difference. Um, I'll be in here. Look, I you... can't take on the extra expense of a larger flat because of something that might happen in the future. Well, decide about it now then. You've had ages to think it through. I still need more time. How much more? Months? Years? How do you think I feel? You're stringing me along all the time. Oh, it's not like that, Tracy. I'll just get Martha to foster me then. It's obvious she hates kids, but at least I'd have a home. Because I'm not going to get one with you, am I? What was the other kid's name who isn't actually in the house who Tracy meets in the first episode? She thinks he lives on the street, but he's lying. What's his name? That's Ben. 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 Yes. Yeah, he's in... He's played by the same guy that was the commentator for Quidditch in the first couple of... He is! Yeah, he is. first yeah, three yeah. Harry Potters. Yeah. Uh, Luke... L- sorry, Luke Youngblood, he's called. Actually, what a name. What a name, yeah. Name. Hi, Ben. Thought I'd say hi to Tracy. Oh, yeah? Is she mad at me? Very, very mad. I was going to tell her. You lied to her. You led her to believe that you lived on the street. She thought you were like her, that you had no parents. Kids around here don't like being sucked in. Will you just tell her for me that I'm sorry? Okay, I'll have a word. I want to let you know, like, I'm not going to talk about most of the kid actors because, I mean, I can say their names, but, like, most of them, you, there's nothing to say. Yeah. The guy that plays, it's either Zach or Ryan, I can't remember which one. one. <laughs> He's called Sunny Muslim. <laughs> Like it's spelled like <laughs> it's spelled like the religion or the like fabric. S O N N Y. Like or the sunny. fabric. Uh, yes, spelled like the name Sunny, sunny. not the religion Sunny. Okay. But still, the, the, the religion Sunny. I just think if your surname if your surname is Muslim, what are you doing being called Sunny? Why there would are you... so many other names. There's so many other first names, and he's a little white boy. <laughs> It's like Named a after a religion. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so silly. So Peter, in this birthday episode, he oh he knows how much Tracy wants a birthday card from her mum, so he writes a birthday card. He falsifies for, documentation, yeah, but he uses a brown felt tip, and mm. Tracy opens the. So Tracy's been kind of hating Peter for this She's whole very episode. Very frustrated with him. Yeah. yeah. It's like kicking a puppy. It's it, yeah. So 
she opens this card and Justine Littlewood's at the breakfast table like, your mum never write you a birthday card. You're all alone in the world. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so being a bitch. So it's from <laughs> it's from her mum. Well, it's not it's from Peter, but it says from... but it From fall, mum, followed it by fools, 15 kisses. <laughs> yeah, it fools Justine. And then immediately afterwards, Mike takes the two of them to one side and he's like... You okay? Uh, 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 uh. Come right back here, Peter. Want a word? Grown-ups don't usually write cards with brown felt pens, now do they? It wasn't the greatest of ideas, was it, Peter? I was just trying to... Oh, I know you meant well. But you should have thought of Trace's feelings, shouldn't you? Leave him alone. Justine and Louise think it's from my mum, don't they? Yeah, you have them pretty well fooled. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Do you want to come and make decorations for our party? Yeah. Adults don't write in brown right. felt. Yeah, do immediately they? he's like, Tracy, you know, and she's like, yeah, I do. And but Justine doesn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think something that makes this show really, something I'd never picked up on before is I knew it was a drama, but I thought it was like a quote unquote children's drama. Mm. But actually, yeah. in episode one, there's a scene that takes place where Louise goes into Tracy's room and they basically immediately start physically fighting yeah. mm. like i'd heard adults say this show's a bit much and i'm i was always like well yeah all right mary whitehouse but like <laughs> so they're, but they're being pulled away from each other and louise red in the face spitting like your mum hasn't visited yet has she tracy and it's it, the acting is incredible yeah no she's good yeah. at it I don't want to see what you're up to. Only because Justine's gone off with her dad and you're stuck for something to do. You think you're so clever, Tracy Beaker. But you're not. And you're not nice either. All those foster parents wouldn't have dumped you back here. I asked to be brought back. You were just such a big fat liar. Stop it! Stop it, Lenador! Stop it! She called me a liar! You are! You're always telling lies! That's enough, Louise! Especially about your precious mother. Always saying And when the kids are teasing each other, they're not arguing about normal things. They're no. arguing about who is more abandoned in the world. Yeah, they're re it's they really dig dark. really low, but because they're in a, a group home. foster home, yeah. they're, it's, I guess it's normal. My dad saw all my stuff last night. He cares, you see. Hey, so does Elaine. She's actually very concerned about your schooling, Tracy. Well, so there's but something I want to talk about. You would never with... ever say that to a person, would you? If you... with re reference to this stuff, like something that I think is really, really difficult for children. Like this show made me sad watching it because I relate so much to being that angry when you're that age. <laughs> Didn't have a great childhood. Put that out there. Um, I wasn't abandoned, uh, but when you're a kid and you're that young and you're that angry, rightfully angry you also don't necessarily know why you're angry. So they're angry at everyone. They're angry at the world, especially Tracy. We, I, I don't, in season one, it's not, at least the episodes I saw, it's not established why she's there, except for one scene where she's clearly in a household where she isn't able to be taken care of. I assume she was taken away by CPS because her mom just can't afford to take care of her. Yeah, the, they do have the odd flashback. Yeah. And they, they, they're really sad. I yeah. forgot that these were in there and it made me so... It really, really yeah. bummed me out. There's one where she's coughing and she's sick and she's calling for her mum and her, her glass of water is empty. There's one where she's waiting to cross the road with a bag full of shopping that splits. Yeah. There's one where she's just doing the washing up on her own. And they're all filmed in more of a like gritty, grey really, kind of yeah. really run down house. And yeah. the worst thing about this is that they often, so Tracy as a character, like this is her defining thing, especially in the early years. She's not delusional. Like she knows that she's lying, but she just lies and lies yeah. and lies about how, 
how famous her mum is and yeah. how good her life is. And like she just goes on these, and these yeah. are the bits often that are animated. She, so you've got this bright animation yeah. about how her mum's going to take her away and they're going to go to Hollywood and then it'll cut yeah. to, oh, it's so miserable. She, I thought you said you were leaving forever. Ted and Julie only wanted me as a slave for their new baby, so I made them bring me back. Didn't they mind? They were gutted. <laughs> there were tears sobbing the works. They even tried to bribe me with presents. I couldn't stay with adults who begged. I'm sorry, Tracy. We can't foster you anymore. You're taking me back to the dumping ground. That's not fair! I got hit first! She basically says in one of the very early episodes, like, her mum hasn't visited in ages and she hasn't been in contact. And then I realise it, it's because she's in Hollywood. Oh, yes. yeah. And it, it, it is... It... It was entertaining as a child, but as an adult, it is yeah. sad. So, and Danny Harmer's face immediately after she goes off on these. Yeah. Can- like, she's so good. So this is what, what I was talking the anger thing, right? So, like, all of these kids, especially mostly because she's obviously the main character demonstrated with Tracy, is she is furious with the world because she doesn't know. I think this is a lot of kids because this was definitely me. There were things going bad and I was extremely angry like the school had me go to like little therapy things because i was so angry and when you're that young and you don't understand why you're angry you don't understand what's going on that's made you this way you do not direct the anger correctly at the person who's put you in that place none of these kids seem to be angry at their parents at least in season one even though the reason they are in this home the reason they are in this situation is because their parents have either fucked up somehow not i'm not trying to say it's their parents fault because situation gets out of control really easily and especially if things are like difficult right but tracy's mom isn't visiting her tracy's mom isn't writing her cards instead of being angry directly at her mom she's angry at the world because also directing at your mom puts your distance between you and your mom that you desperately don't want to be there you want your mom to be there you want your mom to love you so if you direct this anger at her you're afraid it's going to Make her go away, because she's right. You don't want to be around this angry kid who's angry at you. And then you have Justine Littlewoods, whose dad comes to visit in the first episode. Yeah. She isn't angry at him either. She, even though, presumably, he is the reason she's there. She's still angry at the world. Same as Tracy. And they lash out at each other, because it's easier at lashing out at each well, other than their parents. Part of the reason, presumably, that Tracy makes these like myths up about her mum is because that's what they all use against each other in yeah. the home. It's like, she doesn't want to be the one with the shit mum. Yeah. Even though they've all got shit mums, that's yeah. why they're in foster care. She's like the sad version of Jay from The Inbetweeners. Yeah. <laughs> oh. she Like a compulsive liar. <laughs> because also, the liars are like, the, like, the truth fucking sucks. Yeah. She also doesn't necessarily know the truth. So let's fill in these gaps with stuff that is amazing and better because oh imagine if this was true that'd be incredible it also shows because she has this incredible imagination yeah. that's why she gels with cam yeah. because she's a writer mm. yeah tracy can you go to hell duke i'm a writer not a cook also the less creative kids also it's it's yeah. attention seeking like all kids are going to do something to seek attention. And if you're in a bad situation and you're not getting any attention, whether because it's being split between 10 kids in a group home or because your fosters just drop you off, yeah, then you're going to do anything for attention. And lying is a good way to... Like, I lied a lot as a kid because it's a way to get attention. I think it's also important to point out that, like, they are, they do all argue with each other. Like, her and Louise had this actual physical fight but at the end of the day, even though her and Justine Littlewood don't get along, there's the episode with Justine's TV where Justine's dad gives her a TV and Tracy's mad because there's a rule against TVs. If Justine Littlewood's got a TV in her room, I want one too! What happened to the rule about knocking? Must have run away with the rule about TVs! Tracy, I gave Justine permission to have a television in her room. Anyway, it's not a very big one, is it? It's not a very big one. It's still a TV. 
and she goes on like a protest and you know starts I'll quickly get... interrupt it's a comically tiny tv yeah Go it's on. one of those tiny miniature ones 2004 with, <laughs> yeah with, like, with the little aerial and as soon as so tracy gets all political about it it's just like which is fair, <laughs> fair enough someone's yeah. got a tv and they i think the mistake that the adults in this show make is thinking that tracy won't understand the reason why yeah. because the tv breaks and then that's when justine tells tracy that that was a going away present for her dad because her dad is not going to be coming to see and her montana anymore. thompson in that scene when she's crying over her broken telly is absolutely heartbreaking it is oh no it's broken I was watching it and the screen went blank. It's completely dead. I guess you're just like the rest of us again. My dad gave me this. So he's always getting you things. He's gone away. He's gone to work up north. But he's, he's coming back, right? He doesn't know. That's why he gave me this as a going away present. And as soon as Tracy finds this information out, she's on Operation Get Justine yeah. a New TV. Even though she doesn't like her and doesn't get along with her, she's still got empathy for and her. And because they're kind of siblings, there's like yeah. there are episodes. I mean, there's an episode in the first season even when um that Tracy and Justine are just going along like normal, like they're actually not hating each other. Like the the general theme across the entire i mean more than five seasons because justine went to she was in tracy beaker returns she was in my mum tracy beaker like they do hate each other but like there are there are times when they just get along and it's not even mentioned if they're like siblings i mean everyone hates their siblings at some point but it's not real well real hate maybe it's real hate but like at the end of the day, it, you've still got that relationship that you're still going to rely on that person and you still think you you still know that you can rely on yeah. that person. I hated my brother up until I was about 14, but I also loved my brother because he was my brother. I think it's good because the show doesn't patronise kids and the kids in the show aren't patronised either. It's like Peter's five yeah. or around that age, yeah. maybe a bit older, and he still knows exactly why tracy wants a card from her mum and he thinks that that would be a nice thing to do so it just shows how that, they're best friends yeah like tracy just puts her after a whole five minutes yeah. <laughs> after a whole half episode of sh- like screaming at him like she puts his arm around him and lovely duke like sees them walking up the stairs together and he's like pinch me i'm dreaming <laughs> it's so incredibly sensitive like i know this, this episode is not even going to be that funny because tracy beaker is actually quite depressing but it, i think it just goes to show how good the adults on the show must have been i think because yeah the, i think you're fully right sorry do you want to no continue yeah? about the patronizing they even in the show show that being patronizing to kids is is doesn't work yeah. isn't a good idea it doesn't because Tracy's not told why Justine has this TV. Clearly, she accepts it immediately yeah. because it's nice to have something from your dad. And she has the ability to put herself in Justine's shoes. Tracy, if Justine's TV's broken, then that's the end of it. We can't get her another one for all the reasons you spent all day campaigning about. That was before I was in possession of all the facts. You should have told me that that TV was a going away present from her dad. Tracy Beaker, you old softy. I'm not. You won't catch me feeling sorry for a sport daddy's girl like Justine Littlewood. And that's, it's really good. And I think that the the child acting and all of this stuff must be partially due to yeah. how good the people working on the show would have been. I'm just getting chills, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at, I, I watched the way that the adults interact with the kids, which is something that I never watched as a kid. Like... Duke and Mike and Jenny, like even Elaine. I want to talk about Elaine for a bit. Yeah. I didn't see much of her, but so Elaine. I'd love to hear. <laughs> she's called Elaine the Pain. That's what by Tracy, by Tracy, <laughs> by the kids, and kind of by the adults yeah, as kind well. Of definitely by and Jenny. Definitely <laughs> by Jenny. And I think so. I'm not going to talk too much about because I've not seen it. But I was told that in the latest edition of Tracy Beaker, like whatever series is going on right now with the new yeah um she makes an appearance for an episode okay and she actually there's a conversation she has with tracy where she basically goes how do you think that made me feel which is 
an incredible thing because for about 20 years in pop culture, Elaine the Pain is just oblivious. Yeah. And like, so I'm just going to talk about that aspect of it because that is what I know. But like, Elaine really, really cares about the kids and she tries her very, very hardest. And there's an episode in series one where Cam goes to Tracy's um, parents' evening because Tracy's given... um, She tricks Cam into going and gives Elaine the wrong time. And afterwards, (laughs) um, Elaine says to Cam, right, go on, give me the worst. And Cam shows herself to be like a good person by saying, actually, she's very bright. But I think that one episode is a misrepresentation of the rest of Elaine. That is a very uncharacteristically Elaine thing. She... From what the little I saw of her, she's just kind of, I think she's representative of the bureaucratic side of that system. Yeah, I don't yeah, mean absolutely. that to be negative. It is pe- people who do that work, almost all of them really, really care. They just have so, like, so overwhelmed with work. I think because she's criticized for not really knowing the kids. Yeah, like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's probably got hundreds of kids that she has to deal with. Like yeah, work, her work incompetence for. is the joke. And it's almost like the kids know she's incompetent as well. And there's just... I get that it is... It's, it is From the point of view of the care workers who are there all the time, when you do a job mm. and it's what you do all day, every day, and then someone comes in and tells you how to do it, that's the most frustrating thing in the world and we've all yeah. been there. Yeah. I have but it's not because she, It's not because she doesn't care. No, yeah. There is an episode um, later on, I think it's like maybe season three or four, she goes on... She's very overworked and very stressed and she goes on a self-help course and she comes back <laughs> wearing like a trouser suit and she's all like... She's a hardline businesswoman and she's actually quite nasty and by the end she's gone back to her old ways and it's like because we know self-help doesn't actually help anyone it's like this is the elaine i know and i know that it's like supposed to be a joke that all the kids and the adults hate her but i love elaine you won't know this because it's not in the first series but there's a musical episode of course where tracy, <laughs> it's great tracy is dreaming basically mm. she dreams this musical episode and elaine is like the She's like Mama, what's her name from the prison? And uh, she's got this sort of sultry walking down the yeah, stairs. Like, with like, her. I think in like a pinstripe suit, but she's a she's also a bit like um, evil fairy godmother. Evil fairy godmother, like oh, what's her name in Matilda? Um, Trunchbull, Trunch- 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 like a bit Trunchbull esque yeah. in, and it, it's not in the first series. So I hope if we do another episode on this that we touch on it because it's yeah one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. But it, she plays the character so well. She does. She does. <laughs> she really, <laughs> really, really does. But I, I, I really, I, I even remember sympathising her with, with her when I was a child because yeah. it, it was like n- she couldn't catch a break. She's called Nisha Nea. She's called. Yeah. It was actually shot in four by three. The, yeah, as- oh, the so aspect it- ratio on iPlayer is wrong. It's that old. Like Buffy. Yeah, like Buffy. Yeah, it's that old. Well, yeah, that's not that long ago, else. Well, I, I know, but like, <laughs> it's that old. A whole nineteen years. <laughs> we talked yes. about we talked about stuff from the seventies. <laughs> so or let's is... talk about the fashion then. Go it's, on. It's so disgusting. You know how nineties um, fashion has come back into fashion. <laughs> I really, really hope it never reaches two thousands because 90- well, it kind of has. N- no, it's it's more like Y two K. It's yeah, not so early. like two thousand and seven. Like Mel Barker Shank. from My Parents Are Aliens, like Kids actually doing it well. Actually horrible. Do you remember and those um those pink? floofy wispy hair ties that were like yes. triangles of tulle with like pom bits on yes. it yes. yeah i'm waiting for that to come it's back very into claire's fashion. accessories yeah. do you it's- know what isn't though and what actually really confused me at least three times throughout series one, Justine wears this outfit. Is it the camo it's, co-ord? It's a camo <laughs> co-ord but with also hair, with like the bandana cam- yes it's like cadet chic but i don't i've never seen anything like it before or Or since since. Mm. i can't compare it to anything because it's just so unusual louise is a barbie then justine is brats Brats, yes i cannot 
come to grips with 2000s fashion ever being cool. I think it is disgusting. There is a line that I wrote down because I couldn't believe I was hearing it. Justine and Louise are talking about what Justine's going to wear when her dad takes her out for a picnic. Yeah. And Justine <laughs> says, What about the dinner mini? Better than your combats and sparkly top? Oh, I don't know. Depends where it's going to take me. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe that they just said that. Can I tell you what I thought was funny in episode one? Yes. Um, Because it's such a child thing to do when (laughs) Tracy's asked to apologise to Justine for breaking her clock and she marches into the room and goes, sorry, okay, and it's like everyone's done that. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) being confronted with how i behaved as a child <laughs> just like, oh. this must have been very difficult for you to watch sora it, it was god oh, everyone's had a tantrum so bad that they followed the word sorry up with okay <laughs> <laughs> screaming it yeah. I'll have you. You're right. Oh, yeah, because there's, <laughs> there's a bit in... I think she says again, bog off a lot, doesn't she? Yeah, I think, again, this is episode one and Justine's clock has been broken and she says... Accidentally. Was this Baker? I'll have her for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have her for this. Does anyone want to hear some good news? For the podcast. I'll be, oh, okay. I'll be the like, judge of that. Again, <laughs> all of these things are opinions anyway. Can I say anything? <laughs> I'll be the judge of whether your opinion is correct or not. <laughs> so, um... Would this... you shut up? <laughs> it's been absent for a long time, but I'm welcoming back the section of the podcast known as Bad Reviews. Bad Reviews. Oh, oh yeah. Finally, we've got a show that's got some bad reviews. Yeah. Well, it's not... So Common Sense Media actually didn't have anything for Tracy Beaker, but I'll tell you who does have something to tell you about Tracy your Beaker. Your dad? Yelp. No, not my dad. My dad doesn't... He barely knows what it is. Mum's net. Why does your t-shirt look so USSR? Do you know what I mean? I think I bought Why it because... Why you not put up the USSR poster I bought you? Because it's massive yeah. and it needs a, fr- it needs a frame and okay. it needs a nail really to hold it up. Okay. So. so I just said mum's net. No one's got anything to say about that. Sorry, I was just site. thinking that the colours, <laughs> they're, they're just they're so Soviet. Yeah. Like, um, they are, I guess. Mum's both- net. Um, sorry, what... Graham Linehan's stomping ground. Yeah, home of the turf. Home so of the turf. Really... Before I read out these reviews, mm-hmm. so it's they're not really reviews, but there's kind of like a, a thing with Tracy Beaker that my mum was a bit like, it's a bit, you know, she's kind of rude and nasty and like, I don't really... But she wasn't bothered enough to stop mm. us from watching it. Like, she wasn't. The show doesn't say that that's model behaviour. It literally goes out of its way to say that's not model behaviour, so... Um, it doesn't, but I... Mm, it I rewards her when she's doing things that are empathetic yeah. and kind. It does not reward her. Very, very patently does not reward her when she's behaving in ways that would be, like, misbehaving for children. Yeah, I just... I remember for... A little while, there was a kind of thing amongst parents where it was like, is it showing kids that it's okay to shout at authority figures, basically? But it, but it is okay to shout Well, sometimes, yeah. It, it's, it, that's the kind of thing is that Tra- I think don't think Tracy Beaker is wrong for knowing her rights. Um, yeah. But she it's like, she's very good at making amends, but she's not very good at learning that if she doesn't do the bad thing in the first place, she doesn't have to make yeah. amends. Mum's net, right? Hi. I've never been on... No, it's never will. Kind of like it's a chat room. Yeah, it's, for... it's old. I've I've yeah. been hearing about that for most of my life. For, for people that don't really have a lot of time or friends. Well, their friends are say? their friends their are friends mums. are mums now. Yeah. yeah. Did your I where... like mums there because that's where my friends live. Where you <laughs> did... in the magic box? <laughs> Did where you used to work advertise on Mum's Net or am I mixing it up with somewhere else? Yes, I used yeah. to work for a private maternity... I won't really, but it's like a private maternity company. <laughs> it was basically a social media for private midwives and that sort of thing. Yeah, like a middleman and to also connect them to shit. Yeah, yeah, I had to design an ad to go on Mum's Net and it, oh, it sucked my soul out my body. Yeah. And I've not been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's good stuff on Mum's Net, like how to clear out a clogged duct, but... Sorry, that was really mum. That was, that was overly mum of a thing that is like 
stain removing. I, I don't also, know. the thing is that when when I worked for this company, our <laughs> sort of target demographic was like, this is why the company wasn't doing that well, because it was like Southwest London posh mums, right? There are a lot of them. Yeah, but I don't think Southwest London posh mums spend an awful lot of time on mums No, there. I agree. So They have they have uh, nannies and maids, they don't need advice. Well, yeah, they've got <laughs> therapy to go to and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> they've got recreational therapy they've to got go botox to. to have yeah they've got they've facials got and foot there. rubs and fucking chemical peels exactly. to go to performative yoga to go to <laughs> yeah pilates yes <laughs> and brunch with mimi or whatever <laughs> uh, fifi fifi and mimi minty minty <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> mum's now. There is, is no hate on mum's now. Yeah. There is no um, Tracy Beaker on Common Sense Media, but because it's something that mums know about and have opinions on, or yeah. at least did in the two thousand. Yeah, yeah. How recent are these reviews? Uh, two thousand and eight. Well, I've only ah, fa- okay. I've only found two, so okay. I'm I'm gonna read one. Which which one of you wants I'll the other? It, All yeah. right, cool. Right, begin the sad music. <laughs> Mary Ann Singleton, 19th of June, 2008. Haven't watched it for years, but never liked Tracy much. I know she was troubled, but was just very rude and not very nice. My son used to have a fizz doll from Tweenies, which seriously altered his behaviour. He was very petulant when he had her around, so we ended up hiding her in the understairs cupboard and then gave her away. TV can be very powerful. Kimmy, 19th of June 2008. I think I would put her in care if she was my child, and no one in their right mind would want to adopt her. Thankfully, both my kids hate the show now. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's um, that's what mums think. Me. If, if Tracy was my kid, I'd put her in fucking care. Fucking hell, man. Backhander. You can't, you can't be saying that about kids. <laughs> that's awful I mean, if you've ever had yeah. a thought like that you shouldn't be a parent honestly yeah, if, you, if you've ever thought you're like any kids are that disposable you shouldn't have but this is like oh if you're not going to accept your child if they're trans or gay or yeah. literally anything literally anything okay, Although, except apart from for maybe, maybe like, like a serial Nazi. killer or like a nazi yeah fashion can i also <laughs> another complaint i have about mums net is that there's a language they have like you know how most <laughs> internet forums have their own like, yeah, like slang yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. language. <laughs> yeah so they it's I, I don't know why i find it so obnoxious they never say son they always say ds and it what? stands for dear son oh ugh. or dh stands for dear husband always always they never say husband they want or daughter. everyone to know that or... they like their children that 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 or makes me va- like vaguely uncomfortable. I think if you have to say "dear husband," we can assume that you're overcompensating and yeah. actually hate the. Girl. Well, no, I have seen someone just use "h." That's more okay. Just say "hubby." Oh, well, don't uh, don't say that do though. That. No. Don't don't do no, that. No, that no. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is my hub. No, there's so many other. There he is, the boy who gave Bad a bad name, and if he doesn't let you take him out. I'll have to think of something really interesting to do to him. And he knows how bad that would be. Because he's my best friend. I can make my world come to All my dreams No harm in trying. Would you like to? Would you like to come out with us sometime? He might not like the look of us. I do. Well then. I will win someday. Nice one, Tracy Beaker. Is there any more Jacqueline Wilson media that's been adapted at all? Yeah, quite a lot. Um, there was a TV film of Dustbin Baby. Right. Um, Suitcase was, Kid, Dustbin Baby. <laughs> there was a TV film of Cliffhanger, which yeah, there was an was, early yeah. one. Yeah. Um, Hetty Feather, which was I a, liked Hetty yeah, Feather. Yeah, historical series. Mm. I think that's ongoing, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, I think it was turned into a stage thing as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's been a bunch. Been a few, yeah. yeah, but well, this is definitely the most successful. This this show makes me, with adult context, it makes me sad and a little bit proud of Tracy Beaker. 
because when she has those moments of kindness you're like incredible Good. wicked yeah because I'm really proud of you and it she it, it does show that she's learning from the people around her yeah the adults are actually good and and i also i love that a show like this is there and these books are there to teach kids about other kinds of kids well that's mm. jacqueline wilson's yeah. whole remake yeah. Really, yeah. isn't it? but i mean i i i didn't i still am not fully aware of like less privileged people like i i was we were very middle class when i lived here didn't really know anyone in this kind of life this would have been how I learned about it and learned to respect it and learned to be sensitive to it. And I'm glad it exists for that purpose. My closing statements <laughs> are, um, <Be> firstly, <laughs> yeah, firstly, thank you for helping me through this episode because I was nervous about doing this one because it's such a big topic. So mm. you're right. Like in my head, Tracy Beaker has three eras, which mm. is early, then two three four and middle and then five is late like i i can't really distinctly is she at the end i can't like i can't really distinctly tell the difference between three uh two yeah two three and four mm. but by the end series five she's like maybe 16 or 17 okay. and, uh danny harmer might have been older oh, probably yeah, yeah, not yeah. actually but like something that i've discovered watching it is it's very, very good because I thought it was just run of the mill, like a standard kids show that got famous and known because it went on for so long. Mm. But watching it now, I'm like, this is no, really, really yeah. well made. Yeah, and I had chills the whole way through, and I did cry in like kind of all of the episodes <laughs> that i watch. You okay i'm fine you can't, can't watch things where elsie can't watch stuff where children are being no i can't <laughs> oh my god Montana she was Thompson. fine with trap though yeah, oh god, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Were, yeah they were just in prison forever they were yeah, fine yeah that's fine i'm like, assuming Montana they thompson fed. was amazing danny harmer i would follow danny harmer through the gates of hell she's always been there She's she's always well. She been has because she's You're always she's there. still there playing <laughs> Tracy Beaker. Like, and I didn't realize how bloody good she was. So I'm looking forward to doing more Tracy Beaker content. But I'm I'm still slightly worried that I've not we've not properly done series one. I feel I don't know. Once this goes out, I'll know if we've done it justice. What What do you think that we might be lacking? I don't know. I just I all I know is that it's such a big thing, and mm. I'm I don't know. You hold it in your head as like being this very significant part of our childhood. All we can say is what we have to say about it. Yeah, and I think you know we're the right people to do it right there's a car alarm going on. <laughs> oh shit oh well it's fine just deal with it <laughs> right it's only, it's only right at the end yeah it's no one listens really to the end I'm right outside the window <laughs> meg any final thoughts i'm surprised with um how little my opinion about it changed which means like I, I didn't have any big revelations mm. when I was, obviously apart from the kind of the, just the, the ins and outs of how Cam what, why she was back and forth this that and the other but I think it surprised me how much I understood as a child because but it's not so it's not surprising because there's a reason it's mm. going it's it's there's a reason it's a kids show there's a reason like we said it's not patronizing and even as adults, we forget what it's like to be kids. Mm. And we forget that kids are a lot more intelligent than we give them credit yeah. for. So it's not a surprise to me that I did empathize with her and I did understand the situation. And, you know, I got it. And uh, she she's a difficult child. She's got, you know, behavioral problems. She's angry a lot of the time. And she's she can be very frustrating, but at no point did I ever dislike her. So I... Um, satisfied that it did it. It worked its magic on me. It mm. did the it did the job. I I got it, mm. and so lots of other kids will have got it as well. Even watching it now, going, oh, that's a bit that's a bit dark for kids. I never thought that as a child, and I still understood it. So I think you, the you, nice uh, you don't grasp darkness, quote unquote, uh, when you're a kid. It's you just, just reality. It's isn't just reality. It? Yeah. Uh, you go. This is this is more or less fantasy. This is more or less real yeah you, you don't necessarily go ah oh, this this is this is so gritty <laughs> you don't think that believe me now i will win someday oh.
Wish you could have been there, Mum. You missed a great birthday. <laughs> okay, I'm. I, I feel less uh, tense now that we've done the first Tracy Beaker episode. I knew we had to do it, and now we've done it. I'm sorry, you were tense. No, it's fine. It's it, like, <laughs> it, it just it's feels, like, it feels like a mountain of stuff to do, isn't it? And it's like, yeah, I remember two weeks ago I said, yeah, let's do it, and then mm. I was like, oh, I said it now. I think the show shouldered a lot, so talking about it, you're going to shoulder a lot. I blissfully breathe through because it didn't impact me as much. Because it just, it does a lot. The show does a lot. And some of the shows we've talked about don't do a lot. It's the best one you guys have made me watch so far. Like Rainbow, I don't think it does that much. <laughs> <laughs> but Tracy, but Tracy Beaker is like, it's, it's not only a TV show, it's a learning resource. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's a good thing. and a heart hitting drama <laughs> with a lot of heart that could makes you, Elsie, a twenty four year old woman, cry. Yeah. Could you imagine an adult version of this show that was no, like I don't want the to. adult version is Skins? <laughs> <laughs> the adult version is, I mean, it's half Skins, but then like some of those kids in Skins should have been in a group home. Oi, Trace, come and finish your bit. Sorry, Dad, just got so much packing to do. Cam's finally going to foster me. It's true. <laughs> I can't believe I'm finally getting out of the dumping ground. (laughs) It's going to be better than even I can dream it. Bye bye, Gordon. Have a great time. Come on! when they say and they lived happily ever after (laughs) but do they (laughs) we've been the thoughts of thoughts (laughs) tv (laughs) no (laughs) thoughting along (laughs) you can find us laura where I know the email. I've Go on, the email. do the email. Thoughts TV 2002 at gmail.com. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> I realised the other night, I was like, oh, I know the email. 2022. <laughs> it's just last year, Laura. It's, it's not 2002. No, it's not. It's 2002. Do you know it? Oh, shit. It's, two, it's, it's 2002. <laughs> but can you do the Instagram? It's thought, at Thoughts TV, but the O is a zero. And on Twitter, we it's are... Twitter Don't X. underscore underscore... X. <laughs> Twitter underscore under no hang on. <laughs> so none of us know our handles. On Twitter we are at thoughts underscore underscore TV. I'm going to be posting the link um on Instagram and Twitter to the Listener's Choice Awards for the British Podcast Awards. So Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Yeah, so... Oh, eight <laughs> votes were going to get. Is that from... Yeah, but like, we, imagine we get that email and we're like, fuck, we've all got to get clothes. Well, our parents clothes. collectively... What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Yeah, she's wearing pyjamas, guys. What? I'm wearing a top and pyjamas. <laughs> so our parents collectively, we've got what, like... Oh, no, no, you can't, you can't include both my five. parents. No, yeah, <laughs> five, yeah. And those of you that um, send us emails and rate us on whatever platform you use, thank you so much. Thank it means you. a lot. Have we ever gotten a single email? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we get sick. it from our medical, consulta- cons- medical consultant. Now actual doctor. Oh, yes. Yeah. She is, yeah. actually. I think so, she's a junior doctor. Yeah, it? but she graduated. Well done. Yeah, life's rough. <laughs> life's rough. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. (laughs) Thank you.